Speaking of all things climate, the Liddell closed. Oh. So last week, Liddell closed. Uh, this is the New South Wales coal-fired power station. Despite the fact for the last few uh, years, uh, all many politicians within our federal parliament were warning on the right, on the conservative side of politics, were warning, do not close Liddell. It will send prices soaring. Uh, and the reason it does that is because it limits the amount of demand, the amount of supply into the market. Demand goes up, prices go up. Um, we've now seen this week prices following the closure of Liddell soar by almost 50% spot prices over the course, average spot wholesale prices over the course of the week. There's a bigger point to all of this, yeah. too, is that they're going to blow the thing up. They're going to bulldoze it. They're not even doing what Germany did, which was to keep their coal-fired stations in a state of suspension well, so that they could use them again. This is a, just a great act of civilizational self-harm. There's exactly. no yep. other word for this. And the <clears> fact <throat> of the matter is, is that when it comes to renewables, all of the easy projects for renewables have been done. Every renewables project that takes place now is not low-hanging fruit. It's going to be much harder to do, much harder to connect to the grid with billions of dollars being needed to spend simply to link up these projects to the grid. Farmland, bushland sacrificed for wind turbine fields, uh, for solar farms. That, when... And this is all not power that is Reliable. We've also want. I want us to do a thing on all the wind power that uh, that um, Chris Bowen is planning to put out to sea and on, off our beaches. Uh, there's a lot of uh, planning permissions going in for these sorts of things that locals are getting very, very upset about, uh, and the media is not touching it. We need to look into that as well. You're right, um, Liddell. Let's talk briefly, Rita, about uh, part of the reason Liddell. It was sold for no money. So they said, here, just, just shut the thing down. As James said, blow it up. And the reason is what is called predatory capitalism. Uh, big fans of capitalism on this show. But in this instance, what is happening is Liddell are quite... Ha so AGL are quite happy to see Liddell close because it reduces the amount of electricity into the market. Therefore, it jacks up the price. Therefore, they make more profits. And you pay and your mum pays... And, yeah, and Mrs. Gafoots down the street pays much more in electricity prices because these uh, cynics are closing down our energy supplies simply to increase their profit, knowing that it will harm you. That is predatory and it's wrong. It's predatory, but I wouldn't call it capitalism because this market has That's so true. much intervention. Capitalism yep. should be a... A free market, absolutely. A free yep. market. Absolutely. There's nothing free about this. We've got one Well, this is one a, this sector, corporatism again. That's it. That, that, that is having all this uh, public money pumped into it, taxpayer funds, billions and billions upon taxpayer funds that we've already sunk into renewables. And then the other one that actually is providing cheap, reliable energy is being taxed, it's been yep. demonised, yep. it's been <clears throat> choked, and it's gone. And we are going to see, never mind increasing prices, we're already seeing that, but as more of these plants close... And that we can't keep having states borrowing from other states. We're just going to have blackouts. Well, and this We're is what and really, this is what the AEMO, the Australian Energy Market Organ, uh, Operator, has warned about. Their yes, report says I that by it. 2025, if things go the way they are, they are going. There are going to be brownouts, blackouts, power supply issues. But there's another point, though, about you know, all of this market distortion because we spoke about housing earlier in the program. We're talking now about energy, but. Both of these are being pushed by these sort of future funds that the government is putting up. Now, we're going to have a budget next week. They're going to hand out a budget on the 9th. The key thing about these, these expenses is they are off budget. Mm. Yes, so they yes. are putting tens of billions of dollars, and they're going to call it investment, hmm, mm. uh, into these things, uh, distort the markets for housing, for energy, and they're not going to put it in the budget so it's not going to be like part of the deficit. So they don't get judged that on it. that now, is not OK. They, I mean, that, that, the, putting the money in there, they've won the election, they have a mandate, fine, but to not have that as a budget item is, is just so dishonest. But let's join the dots. I agree with you, Reid, 100%. Let's call it predatory corporatism because yes. that's yes. what it is, authoritarian predatory corporatism, big business in collusion with authoritarian governments hooked to the climate and change dogma and ideology, which is destroying your 
home builds, Ed Rowan. your ability to make money, your ability to raise your family in the way you want, your ability to set up your own businesses, your business, your ability to take the holidays and that you want. It is happening because big government is in bed with big corporations and they are using climate change to your detriment. And, you know, yes. Rowan, in the U.S., we are now starting to see some states like West Virginia, massive mm -hmm. coal-producing state, Florida, have big pushes against these woke hedge funds and investment funds yes. like BlackRock, which use ESG yes. governance uh, yes. and all of the reports about this, you know, which is why all these companies are going woke, because they're trying to score points with these big woke investment funds. Um, and they're saying, well, if you're that kind of fund, we don't want you doing business in our state. And wouldn't it be great if somewhere there was a premier or even an opposition leader, hello, John Prosciutto, uh, who would be able to say... <laughs> are you kidding me? To say, to say, you know what, like, we don't need that kind of woke corporatist uh, money coming in here. Oh, well, this I'm is, this sorry. Is the... uh, can I just say, John Prosciutto, Prosciutto, uh, please. <laughs> John Prosciutto and, and the Liberals, uh, with, even under Matthew Guy, went to the last election having emission targets bigger than Anthony Albanese's <sighs> government. Yeah. This is supposedly a centre-right option in Victoria. So when people would look at Victoria and go, what's happening there? We have no choice. I mean... What do you expect when you've got well, no this, opposition? This, Peter Dutton, this is your chance. Peter Dutton and the Liberal Party, now that they've stood up against the voice, now they've got to start standing up against this predatory corporatism of the left, authoritarianism, in bed, climate change and net zero. Abandon net zero quick.